Coming up, a Sad Styles production. Get into it. Andrew's second week of, of February. Oh yeah, it's most most important people in in our lives yeah. because it you know it's scary to have relationships and to have commitment. Yeah, We've dope. established that. That's open, why I open yourself, expose yourself, your heart. You know I'm I mean? not allowed to do that anymore in front right. of people, exposing <laughs> yeah. people. You uh, lost your license to. Do I that. lost yeah. my license to expose <laughs> yeah, myself yeah, in front yeah. of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I but I think maybe today we can we can talk about some of those maybe unrequited loves a little bit. Oh. You know, people who you've admired from afar. Like think, you know, in your life, you have those 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 moments that you can remember sure are you talking about someone that like you had affection for but they didn't know yeah and oh. you know you kind of kind of kind of sweet love them f- you know from from a distance this is in a good way not like a creepy way oh yeah not no, you're no, like definitely, a boyer or no 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 like definitely yeah, not okay. a creepy way like i think about some of the the women uh who, who i've kind of come across you know um uh like i love my mom um that's I, the first one you went with eh? uh just top of my head like, right. i don't have this list prepared you're unrequited anything. love with your mother i'm just saying i don't i haven't thought too much about this list Holy i'm just thinking God. of the first names that come to my right to my head right. okay uh yeah yeah so name something else quickly. I, I, since i've been a kid i've gotten really along along really well with my sister she's like okay. a real strong let's not boy. name a family member let's try something not in, in your own family okay okay again like i'm not putting too much thought right. i'm saying this is the word idea we're dropping <sighs> ideas back and forth yeah. here okay so fine so, yeah since i was i've known this person my actually like my whole life yeah. um uh uh maura your mom my I, mom <laughs> what well, i guess that kind of works it's not your family somehow that's less creepy you saying you have a crush on my mother yeah i i and 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 maybe unrequited maybe not we don't have to get into that right now I'm yeah just let's saying. not that would be one of the most shocking and devastating news uh, items i've ever found out on the podcast was That's, like that your mom and my and and i have and a, you a, a, <laughs> your mom and my mom have a relationship that would be that would be weird for a bunch of different reasons well listen it's strange fine i get the examples that i gave may not be kosher to some closed-minded people sure. so maybe we okay. kind of limit our 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 thoughts and ideas to something very specific okay. that's not going to creep anyone out all right. I think that's I think that's for the best. All right, and I can't wait to hear your list as we count down our top five video game crushes of all time this week on the Retrograde Podcast. We can't name each other's mothers, right? Was yours in a video game? And welcome to the Retrograde the Video Game Podcast, where this week we count down our top five video game crushes. Oh, our video game. It's February, everybody. It is February. Which is the scariest or scariest month of the year so far. D- depends on, on how y- you think about it. But yeah, I think it is the scariest. Absolutely. And forever, we did scary games. So we decided to scare ourselves in a very different way. Um, the idea of love. The idea of love is, is a very scary thing. Very scary thing. But you know what's also a very scary thing, Andrew? What's that? The idea of anonymity. How so? Well, I mean, say, I don't know, you've been doing a podcast with someone for five years or something like that. Uh, thereabouts, we're getting pretty dang close. And uh, you all the time let that person introduce themselves on the podcast. And then one day, uh, close to what, the 300th episode or so, <laughs> your co-host just doesn't introduce like you. He, or like he, Just a second. Sorry, I forgot something. Yeah. My name is Andrew Baskin. And with me, as always, is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself. My Cupid, Aaron Word. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Can you continue on? Uh, yeah, no, it's it's so so I, a big amendment to what I was saying. Oh, OK. Because in my mind, mm-hmm. I could have imagined a scenario in which you forgot to do the intros of our names. Of course. Yeah. But like, of course, you're a pro. I'm We've a been pro. doing this five years. We are the uh, greatest video game journalists that the audience of ours has never heard of. Absolutely. And we're here to do god's work <laughs> yes absolutely we are we're here god's work of course is our top five video game crushes so i want to say this because uh <laughs> you know i, I I'm, I'm loving these lists and everything that oh, we're so doing you and i were talking about you know some planning that we had uh for for the recording this episode yeah and and i was like you know what is five gonna be enough because i could go 10 and <laughs> honestly andrew i could have gone 20 <laughs> but you said i think we should stick with five because the idea of this is already a little pervy to me. <laughs> well, I didn't want to get like 10 deep and just go like, oh yeah, this is uh, <laughs> I just, so this is be- beautiful. I, this with, is such an attraction to this person. With every with every example that we give, we're just getting quieter and quieter and quieter. <laughs> the other person not saying anything, just grunting like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the gaps uh-huh. in, in our communication are getting less or more, <laughs> more and more and more. Longer silences yeah, yeah, in between. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> oh. oh God. So yes, of course, as part of February, the loveliest and scariest month of the year, uh, we're going to be talking about our top 10, uh, top, excuse me, top five, top five, uh, video game crushes. It's gonna be really awkward when you like you number four, Andrew, I'm like, wait, me? I'm like, wait, number four. Andrew, you'd be way <laughs> higher than number four. <laughs> it would be both insulting and weird to be on the list in general, <laughs> yes. but be not number one. You're to like, be not number hell? one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're going to put me there, if, <laughs> if I know I'm in the running. If we're opening this book. Like, <laughs> what if what if you were in my honorable mentions? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know, probably around 12, 13. Yeah, you're letting like yourself that. slip. <laughs> These people are, are like locked in carbon. Now, if you asked me last year, <laughs> <laughs> you were swimming a lot more. You looked good. <laughs> uh, no, I can't wait to, to, to talk about our top five video game crushes of all time. Uh, will we be creepy? Will we be earnest? Sentimental? Sentimental? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but before we I get into that, Andrew, oh, do, do, oh for yeah. what I'm going to do? Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, well, listen. <laughs> sue me oh uh, i have a guess for your list too okay okay yes a guess for someone who's going to be yes. on my list yes uh -oh. i don't want to say it if, it if it gets to the end and, and you're it's not on there i'll bring it up okay yes. um um but i i want to hear andrew because you you've kind of been hinting in our personal life mm -hmm. our shared personal life, <laughs> yes, yes, our life that, uh, together. There, there's another game that you've been playing and mm -hmm. I've, I've been itching to get you on the podcast uh <laughs> to talk to you about I'm this, a hard book this game, your hard book <laughs> yeah uh d tell me a little bit about uh -huh. uh, what you've been playing uh, over the last uh, few weeks yeah you know what it's so funny I, every year you're kind of like talking about like the backlog and i i know i i talk about it on twitter and i talk about it on this podcast and i'm like i'm always looking for another big venture to get into to sink your teeth into and to, it, like i hate this fly by night you know i'm so stuck in the sports games Fortnite, you know Warzone kind of like pick up but there's no investment in the sure, game really sure other than I started playing Madden again because when the Buffalo Bills lose, I immediately play to Madden <laughs> and go like, how would have I done it? I'm like, like this, <laughs> like this, like this. <laughs> Josh Allen, <laughs> 200 to one Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals. Um, so other than that, I decided uh, we're, I'm replaying Last of Us uh, because of the TV show with my player one because she had never played it before. And I can't begin to tell you uh -huh. how beneficial it is playing the game while watching the TV so, show. Okay, I want to talk about that a little bit because you mentioned we did uh, two weeks ago, we talked about, or three weeks ago now, we talked about our initial impressions of The Last of Us video game. All of our, by the way, uh, to the listener, all of our continued communication about The Last of Us is going to take place over on the Mushroom Club. Until the finale. Probably. Until the finale. Yeah. So patreon.com slash retrograde podcast, uh, where we're going to do some mid-season check-ins. Yeah. Every two, three episodes or so, we'll, we'll put out a bonus episode there. Um, but when you say it's beneficial to play along, because you mentioned that you would be playing along The Last of Us part one uh, along with the show. Yeah. What, what does that mean? How does it inform your viewing of the last one? Just so you can find the differences or to you know, add a little I context? Think it, 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 it's more context, I think, but it, it is actually amazing that you think you'd be able to point out the differences and go like, yeah. well, it's not like that. Yeah. Um, but it's actually more beneficial because you can't believe how much is one for one from the game. Oh, really? You can't believe that whole scenes, not a line has changed, not a word has been changed. Oh, wow. Um, you know, I don't want to say anything just in case people are watching along and stuff like that, but there are whole segments that are really good. And I think it also expresses how characters' backstories, I think the TV show shows shows a lot more of the backstories of these characters that maybe we haven't got exposed to in the video game. Right. And then the video game is a lot more obviously action focused and quick time events. And, right. You right. know, searching through drawers and uh, things so like that. So many drawers. Drawers. So many, so many files. I wanted a full episode of them just looking through filing cabinets. I will say I do shout it out every time though. Like when they put, take off their backpack and they look into it, I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When they move like a set of shelves, I'm like, quick time event. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. So that's been really fun. So yeah. I've been doing that, but because I I did that, I got uh, I got the PlayStation streaming service and uh, PlayStation Now, PlayStation Plus, Plus, yeah. Now, well, it depends. Are you are you doing it on a different device? Because I know they amalgamated a lot of them. Yeah. So if you're if you're uh, PlayStation now can be if you're streaming to another device, but PlayStation Plus is the now term for like the Game Pass type thing. Okay, so then it's Plus. Yeah. Uh, and I was kind of looking through. I'm like, what are these games that I've not played that's in here? And you're like, fighting game. You're like, yeah, okay. Racing game. Yeah, probably. I'd probably like that. I started playing Far Cry Five. Mm. In two weeks, I'd beaten it. Oh wow! I I beat the hell out of this game. Oh shit! I am I am one of the oh fuck! Oh my god! I'm one of the best Far shit. Cry. Fucking what the <laughs> fucking shit! Hey, dude. don't be scared by it. It's ah. good. No, it's good. Okay. 
Well, is the game good? Yeah, it's... Oh, I, wow. I enjoyed playing this game. Okay. It is exactly the kind of game that I really like because it is absolutely in the mold of a GTA Red Dead kind of big world. And, and have you played a Far Cry game before? I've never played a Far Cry game before. Not not one or two. Ever. Because one or two were very different games from number three. Right. Number three was uh, the first one of the new era oh. where it's kind of like first person Assassin's Creed almost right. where the map is open or GTA yep. or that sort of thing. Oh, Assassin's uh, Creed is a good example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Far Cry 3, I did play. I did love okay very curious about number five because i've heard mixed things about it so it's it's interesting because it has the lurings story-wise that gets me hooked yeah a cult in the middle of america like montana <clears throat> excuse me montana or something like that I'm sorry i'm very emotional thinking about it i used to be in a cult too um and and so all of that is like super You're talking about uh, catholicism <laughs> yeah guys yeah we're not talking about it what's the difference <laughs> age it's because it's, it's old just, it's just because it's older oh, yeah if, if you started catholicism now it'd be called a cult oh you, when jesus was walking around they're yeah. like you're dealing with that culty motherfucker yeah oh he's got a book that we're writing about him that's how <laughs> christianity and Catholicism. yeah sure why not yeah, yeah. someone wrote uh, a book about him yeah hundreds of years later actually yeah, yeah. but yeah it doesn't matter um yeah if you think you're smart by going by saying stuff like that you're not i just want everyone to be like you like i hate that point we're like you know uh religion is they're all a cult. Yeah, okay, we got it. Yeah, I think everyone's pretty clear on that. Yeah, idea. I think we know that. Uh, yeah, you're not going to change anyone's mind that's in the cult currently. So just heads up. Uh, <laughs> that's how, no, that's how uh, uh, the the uh, the vow ended. The the show about Nexium. Oh, really? Someone went up to Keith Rainier and said, hey, dude, the only reason why you're a cult and not a religion is because you're new. And he said, oh my God. Fucking, What? And then actually, as I say this, so what ended up happening is all the other religions kowtowed to Keith Ranieri. Oh, really? And now, and now Nexium is the major religion. I can't even tell where, where, what's real and what's not. And all, what, all of our listeners know what I'm talking about. Okay, good. If yeah. you know the vow, then you're like, this is great content. <laughs> that was very popular, so I shouldn't say that. Okay, so Far Cry 5. You are a deputy mm -hmm. that is that helicopters in with your like U.S. Marshal and your sheriff. I think somebody else is a deputy, and you are there. So there's four of you, and you're you're gonna you land at this compound, and it's kind of like rinky dink a little bit. But there's a couple of houses. There's a church. There's fences. Barking dogs. You know, mm -hmm. fires and barrels. You know, classic. Of course, <laughs> Mikey. Of course. Do you think it's a sunny day? You're wrong. It's raining. Oh no! Uh, mm -hmm. But the fires are still going. Oh yeah! Oh. Raging. Great. <laughs> And as you walk by and people are very distrusting of you, uh, you are there to uh, arrest Joseph Seed, the head of this cult. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're, they're Pope, if you will. Okay. And uh, and so- They're Keith Rainier. They're Keith Rainier. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> that seems like it's a one-to-one. And so he gets there. He is a one-to-one -one for Jared Leto. He uh -huh. has got, he's skinny, never wears a shirt, doesn't even own a shirt. Green hair dresses the Joker. No, 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 oh, not no, that no, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't have. What is it like hurt or something tattooed on his head or what is it? What is it? Damaged, yeah. damaged. Oh, boy. On the nose. And uh, no, he's wearing yellow sunglasses. He's got long hair. He's skinny. Doesn't own a shirt. And uh, I was like, wow, this they missed out on Jared Leto. This kind of like the weird uh, Elliot, uh, Elliot, Elliot Page, Page thing from yeah. Last of Us. Yes. Um. Yeah. So and so because of that, you try to arrest him your helicopter goes down because they all try to like run your helicopter, all these cultists. And that sets off the beginning of a game where you are trying to take down three different areas of this huge area of Montana where his family, I think his two brothers and his sister have taken over areas. And so you do these missions, tons of missions, side missions, whatever. And as you defeat areas, you kind of move up in the game and eventually take on Joseph C, the the, the guy at, at the end. And it's great because it's just, there is always a thousand things to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? There are there are missions every 10 feet. Like you can do so many things. You can hunt, you can fish. Yeah. You can fly a plane, you can fly a helicopter, cars, motorcycles. It's just tons of guns. Uh, it, it's really interesting. And I want to- the combat, if I remember from Far Cry 3, I'm, I'm assuming not much has changed, but- for a first person game, the combat was actually very fun. Very fun, very forgiving. Fluid, forgiving. Yeah. You could take out tw like 20 people 20. in the snap of a finger. Yeah. And like it is, there's a little bit of like the Batman games and stuff too, where you, you silently want to take on these like little sure. compounds and little sure. areas. And you could set up all these mines and traps. And like one of the things I really enjoyed too is you have like a little team of people that you can uh, draw upon. Uh -huh. So you can hire like just Pokemon. Like Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah 100%. Okay. Uh, and you, so you draw on these people. You can also, when you save people, can hire them onto your team too. And they have like specialties. But then there's these like special characters like the, the sniper rifle guy, a guy that flies a plane and can drop, you know, bombs down yep. on it and stuff like that. So like every time you'd, you'd put together your team and you're like, okay, now you go there, you go attack there. Now I'm going to do this. And it just happens all at once. You knock 10 people out. You feel like the smartest person in the world. Amazing. 
my team was usually Cheeseburger, the bear that is a friendly, wonderful bear that attacks people, and uh, and Peaches, the panther. And it's just, they, I, I silently send them to the other side, and we just uh, just uh, take take turns on them. Peaches and hamburger. Yeah. Andrew, cheeseburger, excuse me. Thank you very much. What did I say? You said hamburger. It's oh, hamburger. Well, hmm. There isn't a bear named cheeseburger or named hamburger. There isn't a bear named hamburger. Okay. The bear's name is cheeseburger. Bear's name is cheeseburger. And I wish you would treat cheeseburger with some respect. I, I have put some respect on his name. Thank you. I have protect your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, yeah. So it's a, uh, it's, it, it was a lot of fun. It's like, it's super addictive because there's always stuff going on. Yeah. It's no longer those things of like, you know, even when you're playing more linear games, even like a God of War, sure. when you can't get through that main mission, you can like kind of beat your head and go like, oh man, okay, this is a little tough. In this one, it's like, what of the thousand other things do you want to do? So are you, are you sold on Far Cry as a franchise? Are you going to try Far Cry 6? Or is this kind of like, because I was, I played Far Cry 3, I loved it, and yeah. I never picked up the franchise again. Yeah, I, with the exception of the DLC, actually, they had a really cool 80s, themed DLC that I can't remember what the name of it was. Okay, that's the other thing. There's like five different versions of DLCs that takes on the world. Like one's a dinosaur version. One's yes. a zombie version. Yeah. One's a like, you Far know, Cry like, DLC can be a lot of fun. I, I was like, I can't believe how many options yeah. you had. I yeah. might do it because I had fun in that world. Sure. Now I'm going to play the game. It is imperfect though. Like you're saying about the forgiving, you feel like a God. And if I, I don't want to pick apart like uh, realism inside of video games. Sure. But like this era of Montana, I must have killed 20,000 people. <laughs> I must have killed. So this cult has a few hundred thousand people in uh -huh. it, I guess. And they just, they're every 10 seconds, a, a pickup drives down the street with four of the minute. And you're like, how many cars, do, where are they keeping these cars? And you're thinking, you're also thinking like, I'm just a deputy of a local police. That, like, yeah. why is it the FBI here? Like, well, cause they know, know you, they got you to do the job. Seriously, I am John Rambo in this. I, like, it's unbelievable. Hey. Yeah. I mean, he's good at, he's good at what he does. He's incredibly good at he's what he does. Incredibly good. Did you he have is. a, did you have a red bandana? Or uh, you, there are like some outfits that are definitely drawn inspiration from those. Really? Uh, and the crossbow was one of my, or the uh, bow and arrow was one oh, of my favorite yeah. things. So always take a bow and arrow in a game with oh automatic weapons. Absolutely. A bow and arrow and a shotgun are like my two favorite things. Cause if they get close to you, <laughs> shotgun time, bow and arrow. Say, one, no noise at all. The other, all the noise. The, the moist, world. the most, the moist, moist noise. noise. Oh my God. Moist noise is a good, good band. That's also the sound it makes when I have sex, Andrew. <laughs> It makes moist noise. <laughs> Are you going to do that moist noise later? <laughs> uh, people hate the word moist. Um, do they hate the Canadian we said it a band lot. though? Honestly, did you like that band? David Usher? Y yeah. Mm, moist? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm not, not a huge fan. Push? It's a good song. Okay, well, there you go. And that's when I push, it makes moist noise. <laughs> <laughs> so and, yeah, yeah, Far Cry 5, whatever. Imperfect game. I had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to play the next one, but then again, now I'm saying it out loud. Yeah, I probably will. Yeah, give it a shot. Why not? I mean, if you if you like the formula, although I think you did that with uh, Horizon a little bit, right? Where you yeah. tried to do one and then lead straight into two. And I got burned out. And you got burnt out yeah. a little bit, which I think can definitely happen. And I'm glad I didn't do that when it came to the release of God of War Ragnarok. Okay. I've talked about that for the last few weeks. I don't want to say a ton about it because I think I'm legitimately two hours, three hours mm. away from finishing it. Uh, and and if, if you're out there listening and you want to hear our thoughts on it, because you, Andrew, you finished it, um, you know, already a, a month and a half ago, a month yeah. ago or so. Last like year. That. Last year, 2022. Yeah. What, what a year. Peace, respect, <laughs> respect, uh, rest in peace. <laughs> Rest, rest in peace 2022 rest you are dead peace. you're dead yeah um uh and if, if people out there want to hear our thoughts on it we're going to do it the first week of march so the first week out of february mm -hmm. we're going to do a full god of war ragnarok spoiler cast break down all that stuff full so episode. now is your chance we're putting you on blast we're giving you a warning mm -hmm. we're going to do a full breakdown of it if you're thinking about beating it thinking about playing it do so and then yeah. join us first week of march you got enough time you got a couple weeks got a couple you weeks. definitely fly through it um i'm fucking loving it i'm i I love this game so much and I can't wait to like right now you and I are sitting doing this podcast mm -hmm. and I'm like this is annoying to me because you're preventing me from finishing this game <laughs> I'm not. The well, fans are. The fans are. Deep the ads. fans are indeed. Uh, so, so I can't wait to talk about that uh, mm -hmm. that game with you uh, later on the podcast. But, but uh, in, until then, to kind of satiate our needs to talk about things that I love, Andrew. Let's yeah. talk about five things that I love in the form of five video game crushes. You know, it's so funny doing this podcast where week to week we pick topics and we're like, "That's good. This is a good game to do. This is a good topic to do. This yes. is a good list." And every week I do that. But then when you look at the larger scale, you step back for a second and look at the whole board. It is amazing that we go from dream daddy to one month from then going <laughs> God of War Ragnarok, who in a lot of ways is our is own dream, dream daddy. daddy. He yeah. really is the dream daddy of our dreams. Like, I mean, I'm still baffled at the fact, and I think I said this last week even, um, I'm baffled at the fact 
that there is a history between Faye in God of War, his 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 dead wife. That's not a spoiler. Mm-hmm. That's from God of War 2018. That's literally how it starts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Kratos, what does anybody see in this guy apart from his jacked physique? I know, but you know what? Like, then again, you meet couples every once in a while and you're like, so what do you two talk about? <laughs> like, you can only have sex so much. Yeah. So like, what did the 23 and a half hours a day, <laughs> what do you guys talk about? Well, there is, I mean, this is, not really spoilery, but it's kind of a flashback where you're Kratos or like a dream sequence and you see Faye in Ragnarok and you're on a boat together and the conversation is so strained already. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, you guys are in trouble. I know. I hope one of you dies so you don't have to <laughs> figure out how to split half of the shit that you got. And what a relief for both of them that she passed. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, yeah. but you know, it's so funny with that character that like in, in Ragnarok has mo- opened up a lot more. Yeah. Uh, like, he def- <laughs> yeah, but it's definitely the biggest like, output of information he's ever put in any yeah. of these games yeah. right um and yet <laughs> yet you're like so uh how did you guys meet uh like all right we'll talk a lot about that in we'll, a couple we'll talk weeks about that in a couple weeks uh, uh andrew i'm i'm excited to get into this mm-hmm. i i mean based on what i said earlier which is the fact that i could have gone 20 deep on on this uh this episode talking about uh, crushes in in past video games that i played I get very emotionally attached to video games yeah. because they don't require much from me emotionally. So it's easier for me to sit on the sidelines and and dump my emotional points into that character trait right. points or yes. something without needing to actually uh, reciprocate in any way. I don't mm-hmm. I don't need to actually care for these people. I can just en- envision a life in which I am doing that. What a win-win for you. Ed. It's such a win. Andrew. Yeah, it's very, very easy for me to do. Um, but I was kind of torn when when uh, when I was making this list, you know, there were, you know, when I was younger and I was playing games, there were characters that I had crushes on because they were pretty. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then there were, as I got older and a little bit more mature, which you can hear in my voice now to okay, this day. Absolutely. I'm, I'm very, man. very mature. Yeah. Uh, emotionally, physically. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, everyone knows it. Don't give me that. Oh, yeah. Everyone says it, Andrew. Everyone says what? That you're- That I'm really, I'm very mature. Everyone says that. Everyone, have you seen TikTok and Twitter? Everyone <laughs> is talking about it. Um, if you at home have been listening for the last five years and think Mikey is emotionally mature, let us know. Average great Mikey. Average great Andy. Yes. Let us know. <laughs> what the hell is this? Are you Swedish all of a sudden? No, I'm a grown man. <laughs> You sound like an alien that learned English. Ah, <laughs> uh, alien music. Speaking of, you know, a lot of people will use that term to talk about extraterrestrial life. Sure, yeah. But when grounded here on terrestrial Earth, I like to spend Earth. an extra amount of time. Mm-hmm. Wordplay is mature. Talking Fair about much. aliens as though uh, uh, we're talking illegal aliens. Yeah. We're talking <laughs> legal aliens. That's, there, it's a much more grounded debate and co- topic of conversation that we can have. Absolutely. This week's sponsor, Ice. Oh no, wait, what? Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. God, how did we let that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I, if you could stick with us for the next hour, I would appreciate it. <laughs> um, so, Andrew, I want to ask you before we get into our actual lists. What is it about a character in a game that? Mm. Not real right. life because yeah. you have a partner. <laughs> but, I do. But in a game, what what is it that you're looking for in, in terms of something that is it is it something similar to what you would go for in real life? Or are you just living mm. your fake virtual life and anything that comes can can you'll you know what, you'll shake a stick at? It, yeah. What a stick. Uh, <laughs> it, was that a uh, phallic joke? Yes, it was mm. a phallic. Now who's the mature one? <laughs> I never said I was mature. Oh, I did. Say I was. Right, yeah, no one asked that. Okay. Um. Okay, so I think it's two things. I think it's, there are people on my list from when I was a kid, and I think those are like fundamental or foundational yes. crushes of people that you're like, oh, okay, I that's what I like, eh? Yes. All right, how about that? <laughs> um, and then I think if, it, if there's any modern ones, I think it's usually someone different than you could date in life. Okay. You know what I mean? I think you- Tentacles. Tentacle, sure, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, the 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 uh, Ursula from Little Mermaid. Yeah, slime, you know, slime. Yeah. Just uh, just a bucket of slime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Like get a bucket. Back. Well, now that you said slime, I can't think of anything else. Um, 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 responds well to gifts. Sure, yeah. And that's you buy their love with mm-hmm. giving mm-hmm. them gifts that you found in caves and under rocks. Yes, yes. You just bring things back from adventure and you give them to them and they love you for it. Would you like this whole chicken I found in the garbage? <laughs> 
The, this tree was producing a lot of apples. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. What, what about you? Yeah, I, I think it was, you, you're, you hit the nail on the head a little bit when you talk about the earlier things. You yes. know, I could have picked 20 characters from a fighting game because, you know, from, from various fighting games because fighting games back then, the female characters were often designed in a very particular way. Oh boy. Uh, uh, and, and, and that was a, a, that was the, that was the immature Mikey. Okay. But I'm cultured now. Oh, right. And I'm mature. mature Mikey, yes. And I think emotional intelligence and i think emotional connection is critical andrew if okay. i'm being honest with yeah. you uh, not enough people are talking about this i talk to couples all the time they come to me to share their problems because they know how mature i've become yeah and they say things like we th were we were attracted to each other because we wanted to pardon my french get our rocks off and i yeah. say that's yeah, not yeah, enough yeah, yeah, yeah. i say that's not enough mom and dad right. you need to be attracted to one another emotionally <laughs> you talk you did couple therapy with your mom and dad yes wow that explains yeah. a lot yeah actually that makes sense yeah it, it did they just wanted to fucking suck all day <laughs> and they thought that that would be enough for a, a strong relationship between right. the two of them and i said we know that the walls in this house were not very thin yeah but as the coupling as we can hear the coupling as mm -hmm, we call it mm -hmm. in my household so too can we hear the uncoupling aka the fights yeah so you, your parents are uh fucking and sucking right now freya and uh and <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i Faye, I, Faye, Faye, Faye. sorry sorry freya sorry. is is somebody else yes balders it's uh, amazing how much well. that information has just now dumped out of my brain yes. the second i don't need it anymore yeah this explains school a little bit too ah um yeah so i i i think i'm excited to see your list especially i'm excited especially to see your list because the breadth and diversity of this list is going to be tremendous so i tried to i think i could have had a, t a different list based on my objective yeah <laughs> in this or like what what my, my concept of a crush was so i tried to use my top five to spread it out over a little bit about what I was talking about, like foundational crushes based on very little except for a physical attraction, because mm -hmm, that's what mm -hmm. happens when you're younger. And then also some that I developed a strange relationship with either based on a lot or very little information about these people, which right. is also something that happens to you later on in life. I mean, right. we, we can get into it. It's February. We can talk about these, yeah. these topics. We're allowed to, to expose ourselves emotionally, emotionally, Our, emotionally. That's an important one. Yes. We're allowed to emotionally expose ourselves. Maybe right. I do it and that that's, way. Emotionally, that's the one when the, when your pants stay on, right? I, I don't know. I don't think your pants have anything to do with it. Uh, no, it's just the exposing. You always try to teach. What is the the port uh, the um, uh, 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 the acrostic poem type thing? Acrostic what, poem? The acronym. Oh, acronym. Yeah, the yeah. acronym that you tried to teach me about not exposing myself with my pants on. Oh, it was, it was, not exposing yourself with your pants on? That's a tremendous skill that you have there. Well, no, I mean emotionally. Cause, oh, because I when I hear expose, I I immediately my uh, my hands go to my belt. Yeah, buckle. I think it was I think it was sad, sad, and it was stop attacking dicks. And and I think that explains itself really when you think about it. You know, I think you're like, oh, remember? I'm like, remember? Be sad. You took that a little too literally. You forgot about the the acronym, but mm -hmm. um, I just took that to mean I can't masturbate anymore. Right. Because well, you know what, honestly, well, yeah. <laughs> especially if you're in public, that would be a bad thing to do. <laughs> That's true. Um, Mikey, do yes. you want to start or should I start? And we're going to, are you, are you, you're ranked like five to one, right? I, yeah, I did a five okay. to one. And so. I think that depending on the day, uh, <laughs> it could change well, drastically. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so, you're, so it you're, is. You're, okay. So now I do the list. Yeah. Now I have to change my list okay. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to go with my number five. Okay. This is, this is a pick that may be a little bit unpopular just based on the fact that this character doesn't have very much to offer in terms of their own personality. That but, does not matter. But I, uh, <laughs> but, but this is an emotional and, and it never has mattered to you. No, no, no. I, yeah. I just, yeah, it's, it's all vanity for me. Maybe. Yeah. My, uh, my, attraction to this character is one of uh uh emotion and and like it, it's not a physical attraction right. so the fact that this person doesn't say a word uh and in fact is dead might be oh. strange <laughs> wow i'm going with mono from shadow of the colossus oh wow and now the reason why i had such an affinity towards wow. this character yeah. is because yes she is dead Mm -hmm. I've loved plenty of dead people before. Sure. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Right. That was only recent. Though. Like, oh, is it only you developed a crush after she passed? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. Thank you for protecting women's rights. <laughs> 
And now that you're dead, I have such an erection. And for now, you. what about Mikey's right to choose you this Valentine's <laughs> Day? Um, uh, no, because because there was a relationship that you have uh, by proxy uh, because the main character in Shadow of the Colossus goes through to all lengths in such a lonely, desolate atmosphere to try to bring Mono back to life. That is the whole purpose of mm-hmm. this. I don't care who I have to slay. I don't care what I have to do. I don't, I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to stay on this path and do whatever it takes to yep. bring this person back yep. to yep. life. Yep. And you start to feel the same way, even though the character herself, Mono, you you don't really see her. You don't interact with her or anything, but the, the emotion that you feel channeling whatever it is that the protagonist in shadow of the colossus is feeling um uh wander i think his name is yeah um it is translated to this person and i cared and i felt protective over and and when it when it became clear in this game in shadow of the colossus that i was in the wrong that i was Mm -hmm. doing bad Mm -hmm. things to protect this person uh or to try to do the impossible and bring this person back to life I, I wanted to double down. I didn't care. I was right. still, I was in at this point. It got it, 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 it it's, it's claws in me and almost like a, oh, I don't want to say that because that could ruin a very popular TV show that's on right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, uh, but the, but there's, there, there are these stories in literature, in movies, TV, video games where the protection gets to a point where it's only benefiting one person and that right. is you. But there's something romantic about that type of love uh, that I think really attracted me to uh, Mono. In wow, that's a great, great, great start. You know, if if at home you're doing... Plus, she's got a dump truck ass. <laughs> she's got big old titties. I'd start saving those because we're going to get to it eventually, probably. Because uh, But if you're at home and you're playing Mikey's freaky bingo list here, uh, mark off the square for dead person. <laughs> that was the free space. <laughs> yeah, was, we knew it was coming up. There we go. Cross that one. <laughs> also, don't really see them yet fall in love with them is going to be, I bet you, a reoccurring <laughs> thing on Mikey's list. I haven't seen his list, and yet I'm taking a wild assumption. Well, I may need to move some things around. <laughs> you said it was Tuesday? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number one. My, oh, sorry. Excuse me. Number five. Okay. My biggest crushes from video games. Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Ooh, very nice. Now, let me just list a couple of things that I find very attractive. Uh-huh. In Snake, Five O'Clock Shadow. Okay. The headband. Okay, I'm not wearing one of those, but okay. He smokes. I don't do that. It's weird. He's very emotionally distant. Okay. I am. All right. I That's all I needed. <laughs> That's all I needed. He was a bad boy. He didn't listen to anybody. He was very rugged. And I just imagine if you are halfway there with me with Snake, you must be 100% there because he's also being played by your other crush, Oscar Isaac. Yes. So you got to be like, hello, let's Oscar, go. Oscar Isaac, fantastic. I I'm, I'm, I haven't heard anything about I know, that it makes project. Me f- it fear, I fear that it's getting tossed or something yes, like that. Yes, yeah. Like um, I hope to by Snake. <laughs> hey, there you go. Yeah. You want to become the new Snake Eater, am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I can, I will also re- recreate the snake, snake. <laughs> yeah, he has his way with me. Snake is great. Snake's a great pick. Uh, if you're a fan of Snake Eater, Metal Gear Solid 3, question mark? Yeah, Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, uh, you get to see him shirtless a lot. Yep, that's great. That's fun. Um, and guess what? In great shape. He's, he's looking good. He's looking fucking good. Wouldn't that be like awful? He takes off his top and you're like, what the hell's wrong with it? Like, <laughs> God, that's kind of weird. What if you have a, a version of Snake? Mm. Are we talking Metal Kind of like old Snake. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he's so very- like Guns of the Patriot Snake. Yeah, like Metal Gear 4? he's real daddy energy. What, so like gray hair, like grandpa daddy? Yeah, like a little bit of a beard there too. Oh, okay. Mm, I'm finding a lot about what myself your, what's right your now. Favorite, what's your favorite Metal Gear game? That's a great question. It's hard to beat the nostalgia of number, uh, what was that? Two, three? Metal Gear, the, the, like, yeah, you know, the original. Tactical yeah, the original. Yeah. That's Metal Gear 1. Or, on the, Gear. or te- not technically 1 because there was a, a Nintendo game earlier, yeah. but that's the PlayStation 1. That's the one that we all played. Yeah, we all played. It's hard to really beat that just because it was so, like, God, it, you've never felt something like that yes. ever before. Um, but Snake Year's good. You know, like, I did like Phantom Limb. I know it's not crazy. Yep. Not everyone that loved it, but I really liked it as well. You know, Phantom Limb is kind of having like this weird resurgence where I'm seeing a lot of videos about it. And, and I played one of the Metal gear games on the ps vita i think or the psp and it had a similar kind of concept where you'd go in and you could like take hostages and then use them in your uh your your base essentially and i loved that element of it so i thought i was really gonna like phantom limb and i just never got into it it's it's the that's the metal gear game that i just never really beat i just never i i I beat it more i think more than once too i i really and the base 
the mechanic thing was just a really fun way to like just attack somebody else's base yeah. and you know play the game in like a really small microcosm which yeah. i found really good so yeah so yeah snake snake's my number five here's my question for you andrew mm-hmm. you you're lonely sure that's a statement yeah but you are i am and you get invited to a party yeah you walk into the party right there's two people there mm. you're early what are you doing there so early? Well, you brought your hors d'oeuvres. Fuck, all right, come in. We're not fully set up, Whoa, Andrew. It's a real backstory back. here. This guy must really be lonely. There's two people already there uh-huh. helping set up. Salt Snake yeah. and Meryl. Oh. Who are you going for? Man, that's tough. Snake. Snake? Yeah. Snake! Snake! Meryl, Meryl was, was one that I considered putting on this yeah. list. because oh, no, uh, Meryl's cute. Uh, yeah, Mer- Meryl's great. Meryl's great. Um, okay, so that's great. So your number five is Snake. Snake. My number four um uh i've already moved some things around so oh i gotta God. i gotta i gotta uh fit some stuff if you're if you're not watching it over on youtube this smile that is across mikey's <laughs> face as he looks at his list okay my number my number four yeah is going to be mrs goth from the sims <laughs> That's a great choice. The girl next door. Oh yeah, the married girl next door. Mar- yeah, Mar- woman. <laughs> She's not a girl. Mm, she likes being called girl. She likes being called girl. She likes being called girl. You're judging her for that, Andrew? No, I guess not. Yeah, it's yeah. just kind of weird. If it would like, so I imagine it's in an intimate moment, and she's like, "Call me girl." Yes, you'd be like, "I'm sorry." Like in what context? In what? Like <laughs> how how would I conjugate that correctly? <laughs> Call me girl. It's like, yes, girl. Yes, girl. Mm, okay. I'm okay. Kind, of, I'm kind of getting it. Yes. Um, Ms. Goth. Because, and so this is kind of, I'm using Mrs. Goth, obviously from the Sims one. Mrs. Goth had a, a great backstory when you and I did the Sims on this podcast years ago at years this ago. point. Um, but Mrs. Goth is kind of a stand in for many of the women in the Sims. Because sure. there was something about the Sims, like the promise of the Sims was to be a realistic game. It was a life simulator. Mm-hmm. This was not a city building simulator devoid of other people's faces and personalities. Yeah. It was not a, uh, 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 you know, a role playing game where you are some dungeon crawler and none of the relationships are, are really realistic or, or any have any relation to your relationships in real life. This was meant to be, what is it like to live a real life? And mm-hmm. now you get to do so. Yeah. So it weirdly felt intimate in a way where I think, as a kid playing a game like this, it felt like you were making real relationships. Right. So when Mrs. Goth was there and we started to get a little bit closer, there was a naughtiness to it. Mm-hmm. it was like Mrs. Goth, but you're married. <laughs> there was, there was oh this, this feeling of, of, well, no, clearly nothing can happen, but like, no, woo-hoo? no, no, woo-hoo. no, 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 Everything's, right. it's going to be lobster in a, thermidor. Lobster <laughs> thermidor. It's going to be fine. She pisses on my floor because she doesn't get back in time <laughs> to go It gets so pee. frustrated. I remove the doors from my house. <laughs> Why do you have 12 fireplaces? <laughs> no, but there was this feeling of like relationship building, of actual uh-huh. relationship building. And yes, it's very, you look back on it and it is very archaic. It is very, uh, 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 played out in the way that sure. it's, it's like you are putting a a currency into the love meter yeah. and getting that person to fall in love with you it was not very sophisticated and yet when you did nurture or nourish a relationship in the sims it almost felt like you had done so in real life just because the game was so different mm-hmm. than anything else that i had played no i i'm with you and it's so funny i miss god would have been the one uh too yeah uh, because it's so funny that like the soccer mom down the street or something like that that's wearing like yoga clothes yeah. should be like an atypically character that a young boy, right, a young heterosexual boy like I was to be like after. But you know, it was Mrs. It was Goth. Mrs. Goth. 100%. Yeah. And I think it was the access- accessibility of it too. She's next door neighbor She's usually. next door. She's and you're like, over. you can always just see her like, uh, you know, tripping her hedge bush or something like that. And you're like, hmm. Hmm. Hey, I'm just going to go for a swim. Oh, hope there's a pool ladder. <laughs> I hope no one removes the pool ladder. I'm not swimming in circles for a while. Oh, uh, okay. So that's number four for you, Mrs. Goth. Number four for me, Mrs. Pac-Man. Uh, in all future waka, partners. Waka. Indeed. In all future partners, I've tried to try to find a woman with a warm smile and wonderful curves. <laughs> Mrs. Pac-Man is the precursor to all that. What about a curve that literally doesn't quit? It just uh, keeps it does going. not. You're just like, whoa, and just keeps circling around. Now, if this was some other podcast, if we were presented by the Barstool Network, let's uh-huh. say, I'd make some kind of swallowing joke. Yeah, I think so. I'm not going to do that. Why not? That is not the part that I, that's not the part I appreciate about oh, Okay. She, it just happens to be something she can do. But she's good Fate. at it. 
Great. Mm. That's not what I... Oh, it has nothing to do with your decision. Nothing at all. That's not why I fell in love with it. Um, sorry, you just put your phone away. Can you just, just hold the screen towards me? Sure. Just click that one button. What is that podcast you're listening to right now? It's it's not the Barstool video game podcast. Oh, it's not? No. Oh, I would okay. never do that. Okay, and the, the background of there, that's, uh -huh. that's not El Capitan? El no, Presidente? I would, <laughs> uh, the Presidente? De Portnoy himself? Oh, no, of course. That guy. Oh, oh no. Oh, okay. I'm above that. No, no. I, I can, and I can tell that about you. And I hope all the D-Bads at home know that. And you are too. That's why you listen to the Retrograde <laughs> Podcast. We don't make any swallowing jokes. We make jokes about a wonderful smile and curves that won't quit. <laughs> Mrs. One Batman. Curve. One, one curve. curve. Circle. <laughs> and she really knows how to find her way out of mess. She really does. She's mm -hmm. resourceful. Yeah. I think that's what we're trying to say. And she's independent. She she's, has her own career. She does. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Uh, but also she's she's taken. She is. So you got to, you got your work cut is out. Is there a it. Mr. Pack? Oh, there is. There is. A <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Now, well, this, you picked Mrs. Goth. Well, I know. But oh, I, okay. I'm, I, you know, you're the one who called me perverse, twisted, sick, you might say. <laughs> Here's the other thing. Yeah. And this, this works for both my number four pick and your number four pick. You and I, we're a little afraid of ghosts. <laughs> yes, we are. And I feel like both of our partners are great at chasing those things away. They really Actually, are. Actually, mine might summon them. <laughs> Yours also becomes one. So by the way, you can mark that off twice on bingo, uh, two dead partners. <laughs> and if you had married anywhere on there, bingo, bango. Damn Mikey. it. Oingo, boingo. Um, <laughs> so go number three. Okay, number three. Uh, my number three is going to be, so that means I have three left, right? You have three, two, one, yes. Okay. One. That's how, that's how numbers work. Two, three. Okay, I can do this. Okay, my number three. This one is uh, I, uh, someone I brought up on this podcast before. <sighs> the disembodied voice that haunts my dreams. The oh, one that I got away. This was coming. Um, the the uh, someone who was was a contender for number one. I got to be honest. I with would you. imagine so. Uh, in a game that too few people have played, yeah. which is a shame because it'll only take you about three four hours. Yeah. Uh, a game where you play. A divorced man? I think so. Yeah, I think you're divorced. Separated You're man? definitely running away from a problem. Oh, no, aren't you still married? And you ran away like- Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you guys are having issues. Yes, and you freak out and you just kind of leave. Yes, and that happens, of course, in the game Firewatch. Firewatch. Uh, in the character in Firewatch is Delilah. Delilah, what? a delightful voice on the other end of a radio. Someone who you never end up seeing. It's a disembodied it's voice. It's a disembodied voice. Uh, there's another one. <laughs> Check on that you, bingo floor. <laughs> you also don't end up meeting her whatsoever. Uh, and ooh, if anything else made me fall deeply in love with her, it was the fact that she left you high and dry yeah. with no opportunity to reconcile. There's just something so naturally alluring about a the fact that you're you're running away from your problems and in this paradise you are a park ranger and your whole job is just kind of look over the park for summer she is kind of your boss who checks in with you from time to time from another watchtower you're a fire watch like so so you're just yeah. making sure there's no fires essentially yeah you're a forest ranger i think yeah forest ranger yeah. and uh on this kind of like getaway you run into someone who you vibe with and because you don't meet them and because all you do is hear their voice and because all your interactions are somewhat pleasant you get to imagine the best case scenario on this person even though you don't mm -hmm. know what they look like and, mm -hmm. and that's almost why and there's a and and it works on the protagonist and it works on you as the character as well. You're imagining this just as the perfect person and nothing is going to tarnish this person because it couldn't. You don't yeah. know them yeah. well enough. And yeah. that's why I think it's so easy to fall for Delilah. I'm definitely not alone no. in, uh, in, in the crush that I have on Delilah. Also, the voice acting is phenomenal. Yeah. The voice actress actually did a video game uh call of the sea i think oh. which is based on lovecraft books oh, okay, uh, cool. uh a couple years ago yeah, yeah so she's she's had other work oh that's great i don't know who the 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 female was i know the male was rich summer uh the actor for um like madman and stuff like that he plays really? the male character yeah oh man you know what i can see that just in because i think you can see your character's face at one point mm. and they're they don't look dissimilar yeah. yeah i also think he's got a wonderfully like sad loserish vibe and i mean that the yes. best way possible you yeah. kind of feel bad for him in yeah, a little yeah. bit and i think that only sells delilah's like enticing factor a little bit yeah. more 100 percent. well there we go yeah. so delilah i'm surprised to see it number three i knew it was gonna yeah. be on your list somewhere there um okay my number three after snake and miss pacman miss pacman i'm gonna go more typical oh this one was a big one 
because of the alluring, enticing nature of no pornography on the internet. Ah. Uh, made that the sexiest thing that you could watch as a kid or the thing that made you feel very odd uh -huh. was Chun-Li kicking somebody. I, I am very happy you've chosen Chun-Li, Andrew. I yeah. will not get too excited. Yeah. Legs for days. Legs for days. <laughs> Even though I think she's five foot two or something like that. But nonetheless, I uh, Chun Li, adorable, cute, happy, can kick your ass. Yes. What more do I need to she say? She can here, kick guys? your ass a thousand times with yes. her hurricane kicks. <laughs> yes, yes. I might be dead on the first one. It's not gonna stop her from ninety nine more to my head. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm picturing the Futurama scene with the Amazons where they're all their pelvises are all crushed and they're like excited but scared at the <laughs> yeah, same time. Yeah, yeah. Chun Li, uh, oh, no, uh. Chun Li is like such a an iconic person for a lot of uh, young people yeah. who grew up playing Street Fighter and didn't know what she was eliciting in them totally. uh, in the first place. Yeah, I, I, it is such an important character, and it's like now you look back on it, and I think they've done a really good job of like reconning some of her like images and stuff, so it's a little bit more kind of reasonable. I know. It's probably gone bad too, but yeah. nonetheless, uh, where it's like something, and then you see like Cammy or something like that, and she's literally in a bathing suit yes. and gloves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is for every one step forward, it's kind of two steps back. Yeah. But it's also, I, you know, I don't know enough about it, but it seems like Japanese culture is a little bit more okay with mm -hmm. these sorts of things. And you know, I, I, I'm going back and watching some anime. I'm watching Evangelion, mm. and they hypersexualize 14 year olds, Yikes. like the way they frame the shots, the the way that they tease some of the adults and one another, it's like they, they sexualize them overtly, like not even a question. And apparently, you know, it's just, that's just, yeah, a difference in in sentimentalities and sensibilities between what's what's what we would have here in, in North America versus what yeah. happens in, yeah. in Japan. So maybe maybe it is OK uh, or, or, you know, for for more people over there than than maybe it is here. Yeah, maybe, maybe it doesn't need to be retconned. Maybe. maybe sure. Yeah, I do like that. The, the one thing they definitely have retconned as as graphics have gotten better is muscular structure is making uh. people no longer you know, like, especially in these games, like not like frail 90 right, pound people. Right. They're like, no, there's muscle on them. That's why they, you believe that they could kick the shit out of you. Specifically the women. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. the men have always been big. The women have always right. been like linebacker size or something like that. Mm -hmm. But John Lee, yes, was a very important character. Very beautiful and had a big crush on her. So number three. when, and you want to be crushed by her legs. Absolutely. <laughs> the, so, so a question then for you, because I, you know, I mentioned fighting games earlier and, and Chun Lee is mm -hmm. the first character mm -hmm. from a fighting mm -hmm. game coming onto mm -hmm. our list. Would Chun Li be your number one from fighting games? Because there was someone else who I was considering, which was Sonya Blade from the oh, Mortal Kombat yeah, yeah, franchise, yeah. Uh, who I think would be like one to one with with characters that I was very attracted to. There's also Morgan, I think, from Darkstalkers. Okay, but that was just a very sexualized character, and I think that's kind <laughs> of what attracted her. Her like, I don't know where her nipples would be, but mm -hmm. they were apparently supposed to be under the sliver of cloth <laughs> that was covering her. Um, uh, 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 but would would Chun Li be your number one? Yeah, Chun, Chun Li would be number one. Okay. She's the only one that is showing up from a fighting game. Okay, that's uh, so that so I, I would I would say between Chun Li and Sonya Blade, that mm -hmm. would be that would be a, a, a wow. big one for me. So my number two, I'm getting into my number twos now. Uh, uh, this is. This is the last one on the list that has uh, uh, that it's physical for me um, because it gets emotional after this. Wow. But this number, uh, this, this, this number two pick. Right. I don't know if a lot of people are going to be thinking about this character, but I do. Okay. And I did quite often when I was a kid. Okay. My number two pick. Uh huh. Bit of a bad girl. Uh, not going to lie. Yeah. Don't please don't. The realm doesn't like her. She does a lot of bad things. Okay. What a weird tease this is. Yeah. Just, you know, you'll get it. And the only time you really see her in her true form mm -hmm. is when you die. There's another weird bingo thing. Now that I realize. Everyone, everyone at home. See that one. Yeah. Okay. But my number two pick, a lot of dead characters. <laughs> no, no, no. She's not dead. Oh, you, when you die. Oh, when you die, you see her, you see her. Oh, interesting. It's Gruntilda, the witch bracket, the hot version. <laughs> From Banjo Kazooie, yeah. Oh, the hot version. The hot Other version. side, get the hell out of here. Oh God, that's Until funny. Until the witch. What a strange addition to the game, Banjo Kazooie, where it, <laughs> if you, if you, not only if you die, mm -hmm. if you quit the game, if you took a break from the game, mm -hmm. if you quit to title screen, it shows you a video where your sister, Banjo's sister gets kidnapped and gets her beauty stolen yeah. by Gruntilda the Witch and Gruntilda, she's stacked. Yeah, she's looking great. She's looking great. Is that a weird incest thing though? If she steals your sister's energy and then you're like, man, she's hot. Ooh, well, I am not Banjo. Right. So I don't know if Banjo found her hot. 
That's true. You found her hot. Yes. And you're not related to Banjo's sister. Oh God, I hope not. Yeah. But I am waiting for my ancestry.ca. And, and, and Morty just asked for if I could be on the show, which I thought was kind of <laughs> odd. I hope it's unrelated. I hope it's about my pickle fetish. Oh, by the way, speaking of pickles and not Maury, but Morty, we should say this. A couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. an episode of ours released where we were talking about, uh, we, we did the Your Game is Perfect, We've Changed Everything, where right. we envisioned uh, 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 video games based on a popular franchise and paired it up with a uh, a new a new um uh, uh genre genre yeah style yeah. one of them was guitar hero was a first person shooter we recorded that two weeks prior to the episode's release and we were really pumping justin roiland's tires were we really <laughs> yes, uh oh <laughs> oh no and maybe three days after we recorded it <sighs> all of this news comes out about justin roiland but it was so ingrained in the conversation that we were having that we couldn't edit it out oh. so um um obviously t speaking of retconning something we'd like to go back and, and change. i'm glad you brought that up yes. yes yeah obviously that's uh a terrible story yes uh yes oh man i did not remember that i'm glad you brought it up yes uh, uh so so that's just clear in the air about that Good. but yeah gruntilda uh gruntilda the witch <laughs> uh, a nice pleasant surprise and uh and it you know what it really speaks to is everyone's got beauty within. Right. Sometimes you just need to kidnap a child to bring it out. 100%. And that's why I kidnap so many children. Everyone knows that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's like a tale as old as time. Tale as old as time. You feeling a little ugly? Steal a child's innocence. Steal one, chi <laughs> one child. Yeah, one child. That's it. Also, Banjo-Kazooie, one of the best things about it, it's like, <laughs> you have Banjo's, Banjo's house where he lives with his sister, mm -hmm. and then you look up yeah. from the house, and there's Gruntilda. <laughs> <laughs> just right there it's a bad neighborhood <laughs> you should move uh gruntilda is your number two all right my number two hmm. okay this one is this one's this is misty from pokemon oh my god andrew i was so close to having this on my list okay well there we go she's cool and she shouldn't be hanging out with you she's an older person mm -hmm. she's older than you yeah but she but you're a nerd and she likes that about you. And I appreciate her for that. Oh, Misty. Misty was always that that one of just like, you wanted a Misty when you were like in grade four and like you're going grade six was like, you're cool. I'm like, F what? <laughs> oh my God. You gotta be kidding me. Do you want to get married? <laughs> like, so, and that's Misty to me where it's like, she's hanging out with two nerds. Yes. And, and she couldn't be just more happy about it and like, you know, in her own world about it. So, so one of the reasons why I didn't pick Misty is because yes, she is in red and blue and yellow, but she's a gym leader. And I feel like I was reading too much of the of TV show, the TV show yeah. into her. So I was like, I'm not going to do that, but Oh yeah. Yeah. Misty, <laughs> <laughs> But Oh yeah. Misty makes me go full on Brock. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a rock Pokemon right now. <laughs> the Nonix in my pants. <laughs> uh, Hey, Misty more like you star. Right. Instead of star. Sorry, you. you. <laughs> me story for that joke i love it. it was the three of us i think you're really the brock of our family here and then i'm i'm ash and then misty and she's like is he okay i'm like no i think he's learning english or something like you star what is he doing uh he's waiting for team rocket to come back we're not sure if he likes jesse or james but he's definitely attracted to all of them uh no misty's a great pick yeah. i i uh, thank you especially you know those formative years, right? Mm -hmm. Playing Pokemon. I had, uh, uh, had that in my pocket, you know, all of monster. Grade, I had, had that monster <laughs> in my pocket. Speaking of my Onyx. Um, uh, yeah, all through my childhood, man. And, and you spend a lot of time with, with those characters and it's, you know, sure. It's just a little, little sprite that you're looking at on the yeah. screen, but you read so much personality. And hundred percent. There is something about this that we're, you know, that is constant in all our picks. Yes. Is that you do create this world that maybe they, they're not giving you, but you have imagined this life. Yeah, you, them. you, you, you fill in all the gaps and all the blanks with whatever it is that's going to make that person perfect to you. <laughs> sure. um, um, so Mikey, we've gotten to it. What is your number one? My number one this is the toughest decision you've ever made in your life. It really is, um, is, is actually the kind of opposite of what we just talked about, about reading into, the, oh, okay. into the, the, the character and, and, and there being sort of gaps in their personality. One of the things that this type of game does well is paints a good picture and creates fully fleshed out characters. And I think that's one of the, <laughs> what do you like? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Sorry. I'm just thinking about how sweet you're being when it comes to this insane premise. Um, and I just, 
you take these things, you have these memories from when you were a kid. Uh-huh. So detailed and descriptive. <laughs> and I just love the idea that you sat here today for an hour and went, my video game crushes. <laughs> Oh, the many, many people in my life. And just like, you have an Excel sheet that people can't see. Uh, well, and I would never let them see it either. I don't want to insult any of the people on that list. By of course, could you tell them you ranked them? I, <laughs> like, you came home number four. Like, what the fuck? I'm uh, sorry. I don't know why that made me laugh. I didn't mean to interrupt you while you're having a very sweet moment there with your number one crush. Let me bring it back because I yeah. do have to set the stage. The candle went out. Can you relight that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Put on some like Can you Michael flip, Bolton. Flip the record. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Bolton record. Yep. Love is a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> Love is patient. Love, Love is, is kind. Is um, no, uh, uh, but this this was a character, and this is uh, you know uh, indicative of a lot of the types of games that that create these characters. A lot of them come from Bioware, and this is a Bioware mm. game. Uh, it's Mass Effect, the game in which I had a ton of. You're looking at me like you didn't expect this. Oh, I. It's funny. I didn't think you'd be choosing the alien that you had such a good relationship <laughs> with. <laughs> Miranda's not an alien. Oh no, I thought. I what's mean, the I other guess, one? I guess we are all. Aliens. What's your best friend in that game? Garrus. Garrus. I thought Garrus. it was going to be Garrus. You're like, you saw Garrus for the last time. I considered, I considered it being Garrus, but no, it's Miranda. Miranda. Miranda was this weird, you know, the relationship starts where she kind of doesn't like you. And, uh, oh boy. Yeah. What a way straight to my heart. <laughs> um, uh, but you, you nourish the relationship. Yeah. Right. You take her on a couple. Some people call them dates. I call them side missions. Nice. Uh, develop your relationship through. Some people call them conversation. <laughs> I call them dialogue wheels. <laughs> And yeah, sure. Sometimes I know the right thing to say. Right. Sometimes I mash that right trigger and go Paragon on her ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can you imagine having, uh, you're dating someone and then you have a girlfriend on the side and you're like, you're my side mission. <laughs> you'd be like, what does that mean? And you're like, nah, I don't know. It means you're not necessary, but I do get some satisfaction out of being with you. <laughs> But it's no longer progressing the plot of my no, life. No, no, no. Yeah. In fact, some people consider you to be a distraction. <laughs> people um, are like, why are you wasting your time with that? You're not, this doesn't mean anything. No. And you're like, no, but it's fun. It is fun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that, that is my, that is my pick for number one, Miranda. Uh, uh, my, uh, probably the most meaningful relationship in my life up until I was 32 years old. <laughs> That's amazing. Good for you, Miranda. You're number one. Yeah. My number one, you know, it's it's been tough because on this list, you know, I've had Solid Snake, I've had Miss Pac Man taught me a lot, Chun Li, of course, right, Chun Li, of course, uh, and Mister Pokemon who made me feel cool, made me feel appreciated, uh -huh. and in that theme, my number one is also somebody that taught me a lot about myself, right, and someone that I can imagine my life with. So of course, it's the <laughs> stripper who flashed their boobs and doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> You stole my heart, so I solemnly and lovingly say, shake it, baby. <laughs> That's... Oh, my God. <laughs> my number one crush. I couldn't even get through that being serious about it. Oh, my God. I can't believe I didn't have her on my list. You that know, is great. Thank you. I, it's the character I maybe spent the most time with. <laughs> I sat there in a post-apocalyptic strip club. She's still working. You got to respect the work ethic. That's true. And you've, you've shot six or seven... Pig cops. Pig cops. <laughs> Cops, no. <laughs> um, uh, right in front of her, and yeah. she just keeps going. But you know why? Because mm -hmm. when you say "shake it, baby," you don't just say "shake it, baby." There's a fucking wad of cash. There's a wad of cash. There's a wad of cash. Yeah. You're just in your. It, it's it's a, in the economy. It's circular, right? Yes, exactly. And then she's gonna come out and spend money at, at one of your shops, probably, and then it, you it's know trickle down economics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Reaganism is alive in Duke Nukem. As in, Actually, probably. As in, I just came in my pants and it's trickling down my legs. <laughs> oh, oh God. I love that pick. That, that is a fantastic pick, Andrew. Uh, Can I say I'm surprised who's not on your list? Who? The the uh, woman who hands you the trophy in Cruising USA. Yeah, I, uh, fuck. I didn't even think about that one. That's really disappointing that I don't have that. I don't have her on my list. Yeah. Um, um, I think if I could redo my list... I think she'd probably make it. Now yeah, that I think, about I think it. so. It's just that's a lapse, and I apologize to her. <laughs> uh, I used to, I used to time it out where I would win easy races in cruising USA just so I could get her in. I mean, in the console version, she was basically fully clothed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was it was the idea. Of it was her. the idea. It was what's the under idea those clothes? Um, the only other runner up I had was um, Arthur Morgan and John Marston together. Ooh, interesting. With me, so like a thruple. Yeah. What about who's the 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 uh, the sassy cowgirl in? Uh, oh, in yeah, not Mrs. Uh, not the oh god, is the B name uh, Bonnie McFarlane? 
Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I and always then, thought there was maybe going to be something between her and Arthur. I thought so too. Okay, in the second game, no, it's uh, what's her name that loses her whole family and then becomes like yes, a murderous I'm just cowboy. a fucking murderer. Which yeah. you know what? Like the most realistic character, you're like, yeah, I'm just going to kill everybody yes. now because they killed my family. You're like, yeah, that totally makes yeah. that. Yeah, I really, I really liked her. Sandy? No, I don't know. I forget. Yeah. Yeah. Something with an S. I yeah, think. Sally. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. something yeah. like that. Um, uh, what's? Do you have a long list of runner? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, Andrew. <laughs> I got a list as long as my Onyx. Um, so <laughs> so pretty short. Wasn't going to choose. You know, it's more of a Geo dude than an Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> Have um, you seen speaking of Pokemon that's going around on the internet that the German version of Lickitung is Schlurp? Yes, I have. Oh my God, that is great. When he comes around, because also Lickitung, not small, very large, very, very large. He yes. just comes around and goes Schlurp. <laughs> and you're like, fantastic. No I, notes. That is uh, the, the Germans. I can't think of a single thing they've done wrong. No, they are, man, they're batting a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Batting six and a half million, you might say. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so in terms of, uh, I have some runners up and I also have reasons why they didn't make my list. Okay. Okay. You can disappear right now if you want, but I need to say all this shit. I'm going to pull out a book. <laughs> um, Laura Croft. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. But she's the cool girl and she'd never go for a guy like me. No. So I didn't <laughs> want her on the list. Uh, uh, Tifa from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. I just didn't get to know her well enough. Though. No, didn't play enough Final Fantasy Seven. I know that's going to be a big one for a lot of people. I'm yes. not a big Final Fantasy guy, so that's that's why it's off my list. But yeah. uh, you have or Aerith as well. Like yeah. I think I think Final Fantasy Seven characters in general mm. will probably probably show Cloud was probably on there for a lot of people too. Right, uh, Misty was on there. Yep. Uh, uh, Jade from Beyond Good and Evil. Oh, okay. As, as a character, she was super fucking cool. And you talk about you know ways in which some fighting games might be trying to retcon character design uh, to to desexualize them and mm -hmm. i think jade was a good example of a protagonist where you couldn't really see any of her skin apart from her her hands and even she had like i think like cut out gloves on her like she was not mm. sexualized mm -hmm. as a character she just was a character right. and i think that was uh she was badass she was kind of cool. like a like a link type uh which i appreciated uh abby from the last of us part two oh I, but why didn't i choose that but i couldn't i don't think i hmm see now that now that the last of us is in popular culture you can't I, spoil it anymore that sucks dude i know i actually had a long talk with abby where i was like i learned something about myself that i'm into muscular women and <laughs> yes. uh somebody pointed out very clearly about my partner one who is in very good shape and yes. i'm like like you're marrying abby i'm like oh my god and i just like <laughs> i couldn't help but look over look over at my player one i'm like oh my oh god oh my god oh my yes yes there <laughs> like, are so i, I do myself. love i do love abby uh uh there's a big rift between her and ellie in yeah. terms of like yes. people taking sides and some people may consider some things that abby did unforgivable and i kind of consider myself in that camp even though i really do like abby oh yeah i yeah. just don't think i could ever get over that call it irreconcilable differences i have a very oh god okay so over at the mushroom club we are talking about last of us constantly yes. mike you brought this up earlier um but i have an idea of how i want season one to end and mm. i just i so badly want to for you guys to go over there and listen to it, patreon.com slash mushroom club. I'm teasing that just because- Patreon.com slash the retrograde podcast. Sorry, excuse me, slash retrograde podcast, where I'm just so excited to talk about it that yeah. I just want everyone to go over there and listen yes. to it because I want to geek out for a while. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, then I had uh, uh, Elena Fisher from Uncharted. Mm. Uh, another person who I, I I felt very good about. Uh, and then the the last one on the list that I didn't make is is uh, Bastila Sean from- uh, uh, Knights of the Old Republic, but probably a character oh, that a lot of people don't realize, okay. but she was like Knights of the Old Republic was the first of the Bioware games that I played. And for similar reasons that Miranda was on the list, she would have been on the mm. list. And there is a relationship between this character. She gets taken away from you. She can join the dark side. And depending on your affiliation in Knights of the Old Republic, it could change your relationship with her. She can be your apprentice. You mm -hmm. can let her get kidnapped. You can not care about her. But I remember really, really believing that there was a real human being as though I were playing a multiplayer right. game and feeling a connection to them. That's so uh, cool. So that was that was uh, the, the other one. No Jill Valentine? No, no, no not for me didn't, either. Didn't do it. I don't like the design of either of them. Like they're too, they're so clearly not human. Yes. Like it's so odd. They're so yeah. odd looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, there we go. So That's those it. are our top five crushes in video games, plus a bunch of runners up. Uh, you runner know, runners up. Runners up. I'm surprised you didn't pick Joel from The Last of Us. I thought about it. I thought about it because it's such strong dad energy. Yeah, and just uh, someone who could take care of you regardless of, of uh, he almost made my list. Him and Garrus almost made my list for sure. Yeah, well, it's funny though. Like, and then I look at my list and I'm like, who am I taking off? The woman that shows her boobs in Duke Nukem? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Pac-Man? Get the fuck out of here. Um, Mrs. Pac-Man who shows her boobs in Duke Nukem? <laughs> 
what a weird DLC that was. <laughs> um, okay, so those are our top five crushes. This is February, and it's not as scary anymore because we're talking about all the ways that we can feel love this month. Uh, if you try. have a, what's that? No, we can try to feel love. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you have a list at home, please let us know at Rich Gray Mikey, at Rich Gray Andy, at Rich Gray Pod, because we want to know what your crushes video games are. We do, and we, we've we been asking, we've been putting calls to action out for people to uh, get back to us with mm. some of their lists as we go through more lists, and we do have a couple submissions. I want to read those uh, a while back. We did our family draft, yeah, uh, and uh, we had some submissions there. We're recording a little bit in advance, so uh, we had uh, Josh, aka at Whatever Words UK on Twitter, mm. yeah, um, uh, goes for that. This is this is if you haven't heard that episode where you draft a dad or draft a family based on video game characters. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go through two of them quickly. The dad was the Deku Tree from oh, Legend of Zelda: The Ocarina yeah. of Time. Great pick, uh, Mum, and he spelled Mum M U M. Cute. Very UK. Very UK. At whatever words, UK, yeah, we know. Yeah. Based on this spell. Is words with a U? Because like, who knows, oh, right? You know, like. Or is it, oh, sorry, did I mispronounce it? It's whatever words. <laughs> um, the mom is Samus Metroid. Hey. Uh, I surprised Samus wasn't on the list, by the way. That, you know what? That's Samus a big one. Say, yeah. Or Justin Bailey. Mm. That's the code that you have to enter to see Samus in uh, just her bathing suit. Just a bathing suit. Uh, the sibling was Taffy Man. I don't know who don't Taffy, know Taffy Man, Man is or what that video game it's is. Such a hyper British character. <laughs> Very British. Toffee Man, I guess Toffee, I should have yeah, said. Uh, the wife is Blaze Fielding from Streets of Rage. Mm. The son is James Pond, which is great. And the uncles are Marcus Phoenix and Jack Kamen. Jack Kamen from oh. Mad World. And an interesting connection: Gears of War, Marcus Phoenix, mm -hmm. and then you have Jack Kamen from Mad World. Mad World. <gasps> Matt was in the, the trailer. No, yeah, okay. of I don't know if he did it on purpose, wow. but, but maybe. And then also, the, I like the uncle thing because I I also did uncles. Uncles so. are great. Yeah, one. uncles yeah. are great one. And we had some people on Twitter say uh, uh, Leisure Suit Larry would have been a good a good selection. Oh God, yeah. And then there's one more creative submission. This one from Joe Griffin mm. uh, based his selections off of the TV family from Full House. So okay. making making this easy. So going one to one, mm -hmm. like what game character could replace each of the characters from sure. Full House? Danny, uh, Danny Tanner, mm -hmm. Nathan Drake. Oh yeah. Totally, yeah, totally, totally, totally yeah. works. Absolutely. Uncle Jesse, mm -hmm. Dante from Devil May Cry. <laughs> wow. Little emo. A little bad guy. Little bad, bad boy. boy. Yeah. 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 Bad guy is very different than bad boy. Bad, bad boy. What a bad I'm, guy. I'm the bad boy. Uh -huh. yeah, what a bad guy. <laughs> Jesus. Was it Billy Eilish? Um, <laughs> uh, Stephanie is Ellie from The Last of Us. Okay. Uh, DJ is Claire Redfield. <laughs> Michelle uh, is played by Solid and Liquid Snake. <laughs> Which is, you got really it, which is really funny. Uh, Joey is Crash Bandicoot. Yes. Becky is Laura Croft. And Kimmy is Ashley Graham uh, from Resident Evil 4, oh, which yeah. is the quirky, annoying person who's yeah. just always around. Oh, Becky. <laughs> It was great. Yeah, that's great. That's really good submissions there. And I can't wait to read what your submissions are for your biggest crushes on the many characters that we missed or you you have a weird special fetish for like I do with Mrs. Pac-Man. <laughs> uh, but until it's then, special. we love every single one of you and we can't wait to talk to you soon. My name is Andrew Baskin and with me as always is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself. Mikey Aaron Worth. This is the Retrograde Podcast. Game over. Will you take this, Rose? <laughs> Furnished by Sad Styles Productions. Prepared You're an unrequited love with your mother? I'm just saying I don't, I haven't thought too much about this list. Oh.